Hey everybody, welcome back to GDP. What is up? Whoa, whoa. Jeez. <laughs> Enthusiasm, I like it. Yeah? Uh, so <laughs> today we're playing Swords and Crossbones, an epic pirate story. Ooh, uh, it's a game made by <laughs> made by Epic Devs. And uh, the, the, the team's name is Epic Devs. Whether they are epic or not is up for debate. Is up for us to decide. Is up to Chris Land. Christoph the Chris Land. Ooh, it has the Steam Cloud save. So I, I played this a little Good. bit before uh, we recorded just to kind of get a feel for it. And I think we're only planning on one episode right now. Um, but the game's kind of interesting. So Bonnie TX. T, Bonnie TX? TX? T Tex? Bonnie T Bonnie T Tex? I don't know. Ugh, I think I'm going to be sick. At this rate, I'll ruin all my dresses before I meet back up with my father. Oh, this is me. Oh, you're talking. Your father won't care. He'll be just as happy to see you at all. Maybe not the smell you, though. Maybe not smell you, though. Wow, I'm already good at reading. <laughs> Looks like pirates. Stay back, Bonnie, while I show them what your father paid for in a bodyguard. Pirates? What are you going to share with him? My sword. Was that not obvious? Next time I say something dashing, just look all pretty swoony and impressed. Swoony? That's not a real word. You can't just add the letter Y to something and call it a word. We'll see about that, because I'm about to go all swordy on these pirates. <laughs> you want right. to do this one? Tutorial. Yep, yeah. yeah. go through it. Okay. Yeah, so this is basically tutorial and some other text, and do you count as a man if your balls haven't dropped, and... So, funny dialogue, at least. Yeah, the... Swordy, swordy time. time. I like that they're sticking <laughs> with their guns. <laughs> This it's definitely becomes a reoccurring joke in this game, of like adding the Y to a word. You're like, all right, so that is a tactic. To interesting. This is gonna sound strange, but in every tactics game I've seen, I've never seen the all the characters move into position first and then do that. In every tactical game, they're already there. They're just already there, ready to fight. Well, it seems silly. It's it's really not a deal. I I just I've I th never seen it. I think that's actually only something. Whoop! Would I just, guess you're moving that way? No, we're going over here. Oh, yeah. I think that's only for the tutorial where that happens. Oh. Um. Fair and enough. this this tutorial is super simple. It's very very streamlined. Percent, five points. I needed five. Yup. Because we're only controlling one character right now, and we're obviously going to lose. Like this is a no win scenario because we dealt five damage to them. Which they have 140 health and they're level 10. They're dealing, you know, 6 to 12 damage to us, and I think we have like 50 HP. You're just not being tactical enough. Uh, I don't think. I'd be very curious to see if there's a way you can trick the system to win in that. I imagine if that were to happen though, you would just totally break the game. Yeah, you're like, I don't know what to <laughs> So basically what happens is we lose, we get captured, or no, the lady gets captured, and, um, I, yeah, that. And then something else happens. I mean, we'll see it in a second. What's that, another ship? Oh, no. So another pirate ship shows up, and they're like, oh, well, now we're going to mess you up. And then the other pirate ship gets destroyed by, or the middle pirate ship gets destroyed by the new one. This, so this, I think, is really a strange choice. So, we cannot do anything right now. We just have to watch this combat kind of unfold in front of us. Yeah. Um, and I guess from a cinematic standpoint, it's like, oh, cool. So this is kind of what the game's going to play like. Um, but they could have probably explained that better by actually letting you do a little more. Yeah, like, it, I think it would have been better had they just given us control of the ship that's getting destroyed or maybe even the new ship right like give the player something to kind of interact yeah, that's with. actually not a bad idea um because otherwise you know it, it's like okay i get the point but i can't do anything i just have to continue sitting here and watch yes so if you look at the layout of everything like the background is looks like that map right mm -hmm. and then you have the the uh the foreground the screen that the water and the ships and all that stuff problem is all the text every time like they attack and they have that text going on 
that text is showing up and so they're about to get attacked by another one. Yeah, this is like the, um, n not pirates, they're like sea police. Oh, okay. I forget their actual term. So it's, um, it's interesting, but the text is, is white and the background is that brown and it's actually hard to read the text, which if you're mm. going to have it appear on a screen like that, it's got to be, got to be able to read you're, it. You're talking specifically about the combat text too, yes, right? Yes, yes, yeah. specifically. Like this is fine. Uh, see all that? We're not using a lot of space on a, on those corners. Mm -hmm. And what they could be doing with that is they could be putting text boxes there that are much more uh, legible. Yeah, if, if anything, I'd even say, like, maybe utilize... So if it's already sort of a, a recurring UI theme of having this upper bar mm -hmm. up here, um, which this isn't explained until later, but why not have, like, a top bar just pretty much always on screen dedicated for exactly that. Yeah, you could. Because um, I have I, the feeling those aren't actually necessary during combat. These, no. And these, I don't believe they display during combat. So they could have used that same bar. Precisely, yeah. And I'm sure it, it would have been weird trying to fit it in this narrow space, but I think there could have been a way to do it. I don't know. Oh, um, so are you able to move right now? Like on this yes. main land like this? So, okay, now they're teaching us about quests. And so now we're given our first quest. Um, I think, so we can't move to specific tiles. We have to pretty much just select a location. Um, so our objective is rescue gunmen. And this, this is actually a really interesting element of this game that hopefully we'll get to see a little bit about it, but it's sort of like a city building aspect. Well, that's kind of what I saw when you first showed me. Uh, he, was, he was showing all the games to us and I was like, oh, that one. It's like a tactical Civ simulator. I, I don't care. I want to try that. I want to play that <laughs> game. So that's where we're at now. So I, I still want to see that. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. It's not so much about city building as much as it is more about like building up a settlement so that you can explore this terrain. That's the worst sniper ever. Like you just didn't shoot you. Yup. I think the point is that this first battle is supposed to be super easy, so that we can actually defeat him. I mean, I mean, it's he only certainly... dealt one hit point damage to yeah. us. Okay, here's here's a UI thing that I sort of gripe about. Um, when I hit action, I choose attack, right? Mm -hmm. It requires me to actually select who I'm going to attack. Now, obviously, there's only one target right now, so my gripe is basically I should automatically attack the that one target. That should be there as an automatic option. Mm -hmm. Now, if say there, there was were... more than one, then it would just choose one, and then you could... Right, it should default on one of them, and then I choose which one. But even then... Say like, say there were two, right? And I had to choose between this guy or this guy. All it should really require is for me to click on them to initiate combat. But the fact that I have to move up and down and up and down. Well, and actually, and I can explain why it's doing this, but is the fight over? Is he dead? Okay, good. You have one Not more yet. hit on him. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so like, watch this. All right, you go. You have your actions and your attack. Mm -hmm. The way they display this kind of work. Now, stop right there. So you're complaining about like having to confirm this. The reason it actually tells you. Just so you can see this is, guy. You can see his hit points, but more importantly, your hit chance and how much damage you're going to deal. Because oh, okay. that allows you to go, you know what? I'm, I'm going to choose a different ability. I don't want to use attack. Or it allows you, if you're next to two different people, you can be like, I have a 94% chance to hit this guy. But this guy over here, I have this percent. And you can toggle between the two and go, you know what? This is the better choice. I'll attack this guy. So then this, that's actually a good point for platform advantage. If this is a PC only game, then we should get this information just from hovering the cursor over him. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. Um, so I, I understand mobile. why they did that. That, oh, yeah, that yeah. setup is almost identical to Final Fantasy Tactics, as well as a few other uh, uh, tactical games. That's fair. That yeah, use if, that system. If this were mobile, or even if it were a console game that required a gamepad, then mm -hmm. I would say that's a little bit more important. Um, but that's a little bit easier anyway, because you're not going to. Yeah, I want to be a pirate. Duh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because you're not going to be you don't have full range of movement so with yeah. the gamepad you're just going to be hitting left and right and you're just going to be selecting things anyway Yeah, yeah. Um, it feels cumbersome on the PC because you have to physically move that space every time um, not that it's really that bad, right? It's not really that the, bad. The only reason I mention it is because it's one of those things that slows gameplay for the long term. It could be improved just a little bit, and that's, that's enough to right. enough to point out about it, it. The philosophy I'm operating on is basically if it's something that your player is going to be utilizing 
frequently, mm -hmm. they should it should be as refined as possible. Um, so we can choose our starting positions of okay. our guys. So it just seems to be... I mean, it, it's mostly combat, but there's also, like, that city-building aspect to it, right? Yes. In that part, I, I'm actually not totally satisfied with in this game because it actually operates on a time system. Mm -hmm. So we can literally just wait... Um, and our characters will gather resources. Um, the reason I don't like that is because what what's stopping us from waiting and actually getting bored and just like letting resources collect? Yeah. Um, it just for a game that isn't a real time strategy, it doesn't really seem like it makes sense. Mm. Um, now with that said, like so far as far as I've played into this game that there really is never much need to just sit and wait for resources to gather other than like you know if i'm building roads it's like okay well i want to build enough roads and they generally you collect the resources fast enough where it's like i'll wait like 30 seconds and build a few more and mm -hmm. wait 30 more seconds build a few more and that's kind of that it's just it it feels underutilized i think it should require you to enter combat or something like do a random encounter and when you come back x amount of days or hours have passed and now you have more resources so make it more turn based on and yeah yeah like I, I see no reason to make it actually function on real time i think that it should incorporate the battle system more kind of bring those two worlds together that's fair do they have a facing system in this like does it matter which direction you're facing i don't think so no um, um you know what uh go ahead and wait Go to the next set. Okay, go around to the to his left. We okay. That's actually kind of one problem I have with is just to show the animation of every single walking back and forth mm -hmm. rather than canceling the action moving. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's same percentage no matter what. So there probably is no facing option. Yeah. Um, which you know is okay. Um, I think this game is more about the amount of units you have rather than strategic facing. Oh. oh okay. um, and there's a lot of different types of units too, like. This guy, he has ranged attacks, so he can hit up to three squares away. Mm. Um, later on, we get a we get a sniper, and he can shoot. Um, he can't shoot at one and two, but he can shoot at like three, four, and five, or something like that. Oh, that makes sense. That's typical range. Uh, can mm -hmm. you go to? Oh, no, that's fine. Whatever. No, just fine. <laughs> what were you wanting to see? Uh, go to his info. Oh, okay. Yeah, info. All right, so attack, defense, evasion, accuracy. So speed, move, speed, probably your initiative. But so far, I haven't noticed an, a, a difference in initiative. It seems to just kind of pass off normally. But maybe I'm wrong there. I mean, we, we get this little display up here. I don't know if anything really affects it. I think it just cycles the turn order. I could be wrong, though. I mean, certain abilities might actually change that. Go sortie on him. Oh. Sortie. What happens to his body? Does it stay there? Swap. Oh, so that's that's a mechanic. So bodies will block your path. Yeah. Much in the way that just a living body would. Um, but I think the bodies stay on the ground for oh, um, three turns, turns, and then they disappear. But until then, you can use a special action to swap positions with the body. Okay. The downside is that that consumes your action. So I think after that, you can only move. I mean, there's a, a certain amount of strategy there. It's kind of strange and unusual. I think really where it becomes important is based on the level design, um, mm -hmm. which they did utilize. I, I there, Later on, there are some levels that actually built that with that in mind, like there are bridges, and if you kill someone on the bridge, suddenly you have to swap, and then if you swap, there's more guys waiting for you, and suddenly uh, you're getting you know beaten down because yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, then that just kind of optimizes range characters. Yes, absolutely. Um, the one, I think the benefit that, oh yeah, they've got some interesting characters. <laughs> Ellie Mae, the farmer. Well, I hid in the woods and the soldiers came, which was good, but they grabbed a lot of other people, which was bad, and I didn't see where everyone went, but they took the, oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> um, and this is where they start to really show, like, all right, here's some of the things you can build and you can upgrade some of your your buildings and and whatnot basically like change resource output so are you this are are 
is the character you are like do they have the authority to just like buy all this land and you're basically given like role of the pirate leader um because that pirate crew died and you're kind of finding like the remains of them that have been imprisoned by the like sea police people <laughs> Um, and they're like, well, the captain died. You've got the captain's head. You want to be captain? You're captain now. Like, I didn't even agree to be a pirate. How did this happen? <laughs> um, one other thing I really do like, though, is the art. I, I think it's very... The style is very, like, focused. It's, I was, it's got I was that very cubic say, feel to it, it. Yeah, it is. At the same time, the colors are vibrant, but very specific. Like, mm-hmm. this building is blue with some yellow. This building is red, and all of them have this, like, yellow brownish to them, but each one of them has this distinct color that makes them pop out that mm-hmm. is different from the green that surrounds them. Yeah, and absolutely. And it gives it that obvious color, and it makes it, it... It's colorful, and that immediately to the eye is fun. And yeah. so, since it's pleasing to the eye, we want to play that. We want to experience it. Absolutely. The only part that... that doesn't quite match that is like even the ui matches that um but like the only thing that really kind of breaks from that is like the the font like the text um, yeah and that's you Sometimes know I, the, the text is a little lackluster compared to the color and the art around it yeah and i understand why because it's really hard to make pixel text legible that's fair. um so it, they probably just went the easier route and i guess the background kind of clashes a little bit i think if the background was more pixely or I don't know. I, I think the background might be a little too busy, to be honest. That could be it. Like, if they had just, like, a simple treasure map or something. Yeah. Or like, even if it were, like, kind of faded out or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It's... I don't know. There, there's a lot of options there. You can't, like, blame them either way for doing it one way or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it's... It, it, it In a lot of ways, it's pleasing. In some ways, it... Compared to the rest of it, it feels a little lackluster. Is is. Yeah, I, I guess my I only real complaint about that. And and really, like, I played this game for maybe three or four hours, mm-hmm. um, and it's one of those ones that I was like, well, I'm in it. I gotta, I gotta get to, like, a point that feels conclusive, and it never really happened, and that's how I kept playing. And uh, not much changed. Like, everything that we saw is kind of like, that's sort of the gist of the entire game. Um, oh, yeah, this is, you can change the rate in which things move around, too. Oh, okay. Well. So it, it kind of... Uh, Obviates that like time issue that, that time I mentioned. Issue that you're talking about. Um, but at can that you, point, it's, it's the question of why even bother having the time system. But can you get equipment? Yes. I just want to see something because I noticed something in the system. Uh, equipment. There you go. Okay, so you can get different. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of different equipment you can get. Go to your main character. So she doesn't even have anything. Though she has a sword technically, but... So she's just been punching people? I mean, yeah. Systematically speaking, that's what it seems to be, but her default is at least her sword. Makes sense. So but, yeah. what I noticed in a lot of those fights is you were dealing 5 damage to your opponent, and they would have 21 health. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ah, and you're only going to do five damage. So it's like, even on the critical or whatever, you dealt ten that one time. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, every time you're like, ah, oh, this is going to take exactly five hits because they're one hit point above. And so to increase your attack power by one, if they do have that system to where it simply means that you do one extra damage. And that means one extra damage per hit. And when you can start comparing tactical games like this, you got to look at how many hits it's going to take to, to kill somebody. Oh, and absolutely. So in that regard... Event, like if if our if equipment it, or if you're only getting so many hit points per level, uh, or or equipment or whatever the case is, and you're only getting like one, then that means eventually weapons are going to become more and more more powerful mm-hmm. compared to uh, armor and the rest of everything else. Yeah. But that's just uh, like literally, I just looked at the system. I don't actually know. That's fair. I, I really can't say much against that Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's basically but like the guys you're fighting now they have 21 hit points so you're looking at that going all right obviously like yeah it would be really nice if i could deal more than five on attack and you just dealt seven Mm -hmm. there are some things that are occasionally set in the environment like if i shoot these barrels it will basically insta kill anything that's awesome um it's it's really cool sometimes i don't know if they're always placed in the best positions because it's hard to accomplish that why didn't that guy leave a body behind i don't know maybe because it's a wild animal 
and only humans do that? Huh. That's my theory, at least. Okay. You should just blow everything up. Everybody I mean, and everything. I can at least do this one. This one's smart in that this alligator guy is stuck here, so the player gets to see, like, hey, this is a mechanic of the game. You don't really have to, like, find out the hard way. Yeah, 50 damage. It seems right to be now, good. Nothing has that. Oh, my. Yeah. But well, we have we start off with a lot of health, so we can... You also have a ranged guy. Ranged always means you get to strike first. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's all we're going to do for this one, unless we decide to play more later on. But It's a fun game. I actually might check it out. It, it's it's worth a shot. It's For what it is, it's it's really fun. I think my only like real concern about it is that it feels very redundant or too long in some uh, aspects. Um, but if that's not something that bothers you, then it's actually pretty fun. Um, and there's so many systems in the game that there's a lot to explore. Okay, I mean that's that's important, especially in a game that's like piratey, because the the first hand uh, mechanic of every pirate game, like Sid Meier's Pirates or any of those things, where it was a, as, as an exploration game, mm -hmm. the, the world is supposed to feel new and unusual, and you don't know anything about it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, is it, this is hitting home with that. So. All right, everybody. Well, this is all we're gonna do for this episode. Um, question of the day. Uh, so, we talked a lot about their interface in mm -hmm. this episode, so um, the question is basically where do you think their strengths and weaknesses were in their interfaces and what would you do to improve it, I guess? Yeah, I mean we, we talked a bit about it, so uh, you use that as a springboard and uh, if there's anything we didn't catch uh, about the interface, uh, let us know and um, you know, tell us what you think. Yeah. Check the game out, it, it does look like a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I was the one playing it. It's fun, it's fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, catch you later. Thank you for watching, everybody.